Good afternoon. It is Thursday, the 12th of March, 2009. This is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. The market continues to rally here. We saw that it did, in fact, get back up above this $28 level that we're looking at as potential resistance. As again, you never know what resistance is until after the fact. And yesterday on the blog, I had outlined a potential scenario here, and I want to review that because uh, this is something I said, you know, be aware it's not a prediction, but just something that could happen here, which is for the S&P, if we rallied up to that prior support it could then fall back down we've seen lower volume and these candles right in here all I did was basically steal them from uh, this mid-October move when we saw another bear market rally superimpose them over here and then put the moving averages on well what we had obviously was that the market decided to continue to rally without any further pullback I was hoping uh, yesterday that uh, we would see continued pullback down towards 26 and a half and create a real nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern on the Russell 2000 we did see that pattern set up but right here on the Nasdaq here's what we have now forget about the imaginary scenarios because you have to trade what you see unfolding in front of you not what you think might happen we'd seen the trend line break we'd seen this market uh, above the five-day moving average that five-day moving average started to advance yesterday and then in here uh, what we what we were looking at yesterday was the two-day VWAP and I said that basically that's going to now be the three-day VWAP VWAP that becomes important. This morning we had a pullback. Uh, that, let's take a look at the one minute time frame first. It got below the daily VWAP, popped above there, and that's where the buyers took control for the session. That level remained above the three day VWAP. And why is the three day VWAP important? Because basically, the three days ago is where this market began this rally that we see right here so this is basically the psychology of this move the average participant over the last three days has has made money because the average price on the Nasdaq 100 the Q's that is is about 2765 if you read my blog I you'd seen uh, intraday I'd made a post uh, that I had uh, told my mom to sell half of her uh, position that we had purchased right here. I told her to get out at $28.30 the stop on the remainder of that was right here. I'm not sure what level I'm going to raise that stop up to, but perhaps about 28.10 or so. It's been about a 7 or 8% trade in a couple days, and for someone who's been sitting on the sidelines in cash for the last 18 months, that's a heck of a return. So right now, if we look at the uh, NASDAQ 100, here's what we have uh, on the daily time frame. We have this 50-day uh, moving average right here at about $29.20, and we have just above that the level of $29.60 that had been important. Uh, we'll look at this on the intraday time frame in a moment as well, but uh, here on the uh, daily time frame, what we've been looking at is the February highs to the recent lows. Right now, we've retraced about 50% of that rally, so at about $28.60, a uh, $28.70 rather. A 61.8% retracement would bring us up to about $29.40. Uh, so we've been focused on $29.60. Uh, so basically, we're you you know that 2940 2960 level is the potential area where we also have again this uh, price objective from what what didn't really occur uh, of the head and shoulders pattern but we were also looking at this if you recall as the height of this pattern if we take that and add it to the breakout point it still it gets us up in about that same area so um, the momentum obviously continues to be very strong I, I don't think it makes any sense at all to sell short uh, into this strength Clearly, it's gotten a little bit oversold short term, but we, but the but the weekly time frame and daily time frames have been so so old or oversold recently that these powerful rallies that's what causes the powerful rallies in the uh, downtrends is that you know we've seen these types of rallies before. There's nothing here to indicate that this is the bottom as everyone is, you know seems to want to proclaim. It's still possible that this scenario that I outlined uh, right here could occur. I don't think it's you know likely right now but we do still see uh, less volume in here the last couple days so the buyers aren't really chasing it yet it's 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 seemingly more of a short covering rally but as long as this market can probably hold above 
$27.90. And I think that's where I'll have a, uh, a stop on the remainder of that balance for my mom. I think $20, $27.90 is probably uh, going to be a very important level here uh, the next few days as that had been prior, uh, prior resistance. So we'll look for it now to become support, maybe even below there, but I don't want to give it as much room. So the NASDAQ obviously uh, the, the trend line has been broken. We've got the higher highs and higher lows. And this is why you want to be a trader because catching rallies like this can be a tremendous am uh, amount of fun. Uh, you know, But we're not in it for fun. It can be very financially rewarding in a very short period of time. Let's take a look now at the financials. The financials uh, today were up 10%. Uh, this this trend line that we've had our eye on here on the uh, on the 30 minute and I actually said we wanted to uh, go back a little bit further and look at that 120 minute uh, time frame and that trend line has been broken in here so the financials continue to push past uh, these levels that that people were looking at as potential resistance and and that's all they are is it, in, until the market actually runs up to it let, let's say we're you know let's say the market is uh, uh, right here and we're looking at this level it breaks out we could say well there's the resistance that's the potential level of resistance but if the market does this you know it did no good to sell short right here or to sell your longs that's an area where you tighten your your stops up and you look for evidence that the sellers are taking control and right now we don't have any of that evidence the buyers are, are clearly still in control of this market here over the last few days beautiful rally from six up to eight so we've had you know 30 something percent this week uh, well since since these lows right here or at least uh, 30 something percent rally and um, obviously if you're trading leverage funds it's uh, it's a lot lot better than that even so uh, something just happened to my screen I don't know if that's gonna capture weird on your end or if it's just on my end okay I think I just fixed that uh, but anyways here's you know these are the, gonna be the next levels of potential resistance for this market Obviously, this area here at 860 had been an important level as far as support. We had seen it act as resistance. So if this market's going to run out of steam, that's a likely area where sellers are, are to be encountered. We've experienced a, a big rally. And again, always ask yourself, where does the market come from? Where does it have the potential to go? Well, it's just come from six up to eight and a quarter. Uh, new entries up here to me don't make any sense, but you see that this market touched on the three-day VWAP. The buyers showed up in there in the financials as well, and that's where it was off to the races in here, higher highs and higher lows, squeezing the, sh the recent shorts in there. You can't, you know, where do you put your stop if you're going to be a buyer up in here? To me, it makes no sense. To me, it's just a lot more short covering, and that... <coughs> Excuse me, that leaves us vulnerable to a little bit of a pullback. I think this is our first likely level of potential support near about $7.70. But, uh, you, you, you know, if you're a very... Uh, skillful intraday trader then maybe tomorrow we get some opportunities to to take advantage of the short side but right now the momentum is too strong to fight daily time frame we're headed up towards uh, this level maybe that's where we meet the 50 day moving average here in the next couple days as well so uh, and then on the daily time frame we could be setting up in here for and it's very early to call this but we could be setting up for maybe a rally up towards there. We build a right shoulder and then break out, and then maybe that was the low. But the market still has a lot to prove. Uh, these rallies need to be looked at as trading rallies only. The Russell 2000, this one really, um, you know, yesterday we were looking at, in the last couple of days we were looking at these November lows as uh, we're, questioning whether they would become a level that got uh, defended by the sellers. Yesterday it looked like it had as it closed below there, but today we jumped above that 10-day moving average right up to the 20-day moving average and right up to this level where we'd seen this this breakdown from. So we're pretty extended here with a 6.2% rally. Uh, on the blog earlier today I'd also mentioned this, uh, you know, that it looks like this uh, um, you know, perfect little inverted head and shoulders pattern, textbook pattern. And a lot of times those patterns look too good to be true. But when you look at it on the 30 minute time frame, you can make more sense of this market than what you're seeing on a daily time frame. So we have this left shoulder, the, the, the head, and then the right shoulder in here. We'd seen the neckline broken. The market rallied beyond that. And yesterday we were saying that basically moving up above that 38 level could see a quick move up towards 39 is there has been very little trading activity 
in this range over the last several years. In fact, uh, they, you know, there have been only about 30, 30 minutes of trading in that range over the last six or seven years. So we're up to the level where we expected to encounter uh, uh, the, the potential for resistance right now. If we look at the Fibonacci of this bigger move, we're also at the 38.2% retracement of that area. The 50% retracement brings us up to, uh, let me just... Uh, fix that. The 50% the retracement level brings us up to about the $40.75 level. And again, if we take the height of this uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern, add that to the breakout point, that also gives us approximately that 41 area. So reason to believe that maybe this market can continue up towards that level. I personally believe that the market is is likely to, uh, to pull back to the neckline would be ideal. But again, the, the market doesn't care what I think. What we want to do is base our, 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 our actions on what the market tells us to do. But we want to see higher highs and higher lows. It's gotten very extended here short term. Same pattern in here today. This market initially the sellers showed up. They took control above that daily VWAP and didn't let go of it all day. This market in fact got below the, the average of the last three days. But then obviously retook that and here we are up at these extended levels we're at a potential level of resistance so i think in here the upside is getting very stretched i i'm i'm going into tomorrow with a bias that we're due for a pullback but i'm willing to trade whatever this market gives us from here s p 500 finally let's look at that 3.9 percent gain today up two dollars and 86 cents so a uh, big move in here and uh Bullishly, we're above the uh, the November lows in, in this this low here that we had been monitoring. Uh, somewhat bearishly, or reason for concern is that we still have light volume. The moving average on the volume that I have there is a 20-day moving average of volume, so we're still running well below the average of the last 20 days. And when we look at a, a trend line, obviously that's been broken. We'll look at that uh, on the 30-minute time frame. Here's that trend line we'd seen was broken yesterday. Uh, here's that inverted head and shoulders pattern that was setting up in here as well not as neat as the Russell the Russell really has that textbook pattern but obviously we do have in in this uh, S&P 500 market a rising five-day moving average and a pattern of higher highs and higher lows we're getting extended here doesn't mean it can't keep continuing higher but that's not what the odds favor odds favor that 74 would be a level of support on a pullback and then we want to see evidence that the buyers take control like they did in here and then look for reasons to get long uh, you know continue to get long uh, I'll continue to uh, post charts to the blog intraday so keep an eye on that